Cheers, man. Cheers, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Thanks for coming today. Wes Davies here, welcome back to another video. I'm up here in Kaohsiung at a very nice restaurant and bar called The Lighthouse. This is Eric. So Eric, you are the manager and part owner of The Lighthouse, right? Yeah, that's correct. So maybe a little bit of background about you before we get into the bar itself. You okay. are Canadian. Yes, uh, I was born and raised uh, just outside of Toronto. Came to Taiwan in 2003, expecting Ooh. to just be here for a quick visit to visit a very good friend of mine. Ended up falling in love with uh, Taiwan, the people, the place, the culture, everything, and decided to stay. Taught for 15 years, and then my 15th year, uh, my friends who uh, were the original owners of Lighthouse ended up uh, asking me if I'd like to join the team. Made an investment in the bar and became their general manager. That's crazy. So you came here for the first time in 2003. Yes. That's 20 years ago now, Yeah, yeah. basically. Yeah, actually March 2nd, uh, it'll be my 20 year Taiwan anniversary. My son is actually visiting from Paraguay, That's so right. going to be showing him around Taiwan. I'm happy he's here during Chinese New Year. He oh, gets for to sure. See a lot of the culture. I'll actually take him to Yen Shui. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that'll be an experience for yeah, him. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it'll be my third time of getting blasted with uh, those yeah. rockets. And you have to make sure you actually wear the proper clothing and equipment, oh, right? Yeah. That's not the, really the, a joke. The most important thing is actually a full face helmet with a mm. towel, because uh, sometimes the they, they go up inside. They sneak up into the yeah, helmet. Yeah, and explode inside. How does so. your son like Taiwan so far? Oh, he's loving it, yeah. you know, yeah. He's, uh, again, same thing that same reasons I think I like it, just the people, the food, mm -hmm. you know, the convenience of everything, so. Hope he's not a picky eater. Oh, no, he's not. So he's trying everything? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what does he like so far? Pretty much everything. We've had hot pot, we've had um, actually some mainland Chinese food, we had uh, okay. what, the ganguo, with dry uh, dry hot pot, you yeah. know. Yeah, he actually tried the uh, thousand year, the century egg. Pidan, yeah. The pidan. <laughs> Classic. He uh, it was actually, I was surprised he liked it. It doesn't look appetizing, but it tastes a lot better, so. That's the thing. Uh, about a lot of Taiwanese food, it doesn't always look like you will enjoy it. Yeah. But when you taste it, it tastes great. Like I find mian xian a little bit like that. Yeah. You know, it's got the oysters in there and then gloopy noodles. Yeah. But it tastes great. Yeah, it does. So you came in 2003. Yeah. What are the biggest differences that you've seen take place over that span of time? Well, I lived in Taipei for a year and a half and then I moved to okay. Kaohsiung. So the one thing with Kaohsiung is it's been amazing how green it's become. Mm. How it's sort of the infrastructure, the MRT, everything like that. 30, 40 years ago, I have some friends who've been here that long, and they were like, Love River used to stink. Yep. It was disgusting, dirty, polluted, everything like that. Hmm. Now it's just beautiful. You can go, you know, the, the boats up and down and sure. see, you know, see the shore. And all the um, nice new buildings that they've built yeah, around there, the, yeah. the music center, yeah, the Pier music, 2. Yeah, yeah they uh, really have really tried hard, I think, yeah, to yeah. No, spruce definitely. up that area and make it a much more livable city, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So would you say that kind of change has taken place all over Taiwan? Definitely it has, but I think Kaohsiung really because uh, probably in the late 90s they were sort of, you know, the new mayor of the city at the time sort of was like a little embarrassed and going, yeah, this okay. is a very disgusting city. Let's, you know, make it greener, make it mm -hmm. more tourist friendly and stuff. And so. I know even sometimes if I'm in a different city like Taichung or Taipei, I mentioned I live in Kaohsiung. Yeah. I think it still has that lingering reputation of maybe not the best city to live in, even yeah. though so much has changed. Yeah. So I think that's one of the things we're trying to do with the YouTube videos is just kind of show people that actually Kaohsiung is a great city oh, and yeah. every year it just gets better and better. So what do you like most, would you say, about living in the South? A, uh, you know, Taipei, um, it's a little bit more cosmopolitan. So when people are on the clock, there's a lot of like pressure and they're getting ready to do stuff and everything like that. And they're like, oh, I gotta work, I gotta go here, I gotta do that. Kaohsiung, I don't know if it's the sun, the vitamin D everybody gets, but everybody's just laid back, friendly. Mm -hmm. People have even gone out of their way to like, you know, help me out and be like, oh, hey, you know, what can I, and I'm like, I'm just deciding which soup I want, okay. you know, it's, it's okay, don't need your help, but thank you, you know? Right. Probably one of the, one of the things is just being down here and, you know, the proximity to Chijing Island, the mm -hmm. sunset bar over there. Yeah. Kind of got the best of everything. Yeah, it Like, does. we're right on the ocean, the mountains aren't too far away. And how about Taiwanese food? Oh, I love it. Love it? Yeah, yeah. You've always loved it? Yeah. You can go anywhere and there's just so much flavor, so much yeah. taste, so many options, you know. I mean, you walk down almost any street and there's 25 restaurants. Oh, yeah. It's wild. Easy, easy. So your number one Taiwanese food, what would you say? 
Ooh, I, I'm, hard to say. Yeah, right? it's hard to say. There's so many that I like. Probably hot pots. You know, stinky tofu. Actually, it, it's really weird. It's for me, it's a nostalgic thing about. I grew up raising horses, so uh, oh. it actually reminds me of walking into the barn first thing in the morning, <laughs> that smell. Is that good, a know. good thing? I don't know. I get nostalgic. <laughs> I love eating it. it, as strange as that might seem, you know, but it's just, again, it's just sort of one of those things, you know. That's so interesting. One of the things that uh, I also love about Asian food and being in Taiwan is just everything is so fresh. Compared back to home, like most restaurants you go to, grocery store, everything, it's, everything is just processed. Sure, or frozen. Frozen, yeah. you know, here, everything. Vegetables, fruits, mm. meat. So, as a foreigner living here in Kaohsiung, what are the challenges of like owning and operating a bar like this? I, I was actually a little bit lucky because it was an established bar, so it was easy to just sort of jump right. in and do everything. I think one of the biggest challenges would just be uh, making sure you have the correct permits, making sure, sure that, you know, you follow the laws of the uh, Environmental Protection Sea Agency in terms of noise pollution and mm -hmm. environmental and stuff like that. You know, and just trying to keep a good uh, relationship with neighbors. Unfortunately, there's no zoning in Taiwan. So oh, there's okay. no like bar district or commercial district. Mm. You know, everything is on top of each other. So we're on the first floor. Second floor and up is all residential, you know. Hmm. So here it's just, you know, every everything is together. There's even factories in the city, you know. Navigating through all that and, and making sure that you have everything sort of by the book, you know. So what would you say Lighthouse is most known for in Kaohsiung? Like more of a restaurant, more of a bar, or a nice mixture of both? Uh, I think it's a mixture of both. It's a place where, you know, no matter if you're Taiwanese or a foreigner, you can come, you can find something that you're going to like to eat. We have a wide variety of drinks. Friday nights we have DJ nights, Saturdays. We have live music, Right. you know, we're also starting a ladies night recently, so okay. Wednesday nights. Again, it's just sort of a place where you can go no matter what, whether you're young, you're old. Um, we have a lot of regulars who came here in their 20s, ended up, you know, getting married, and now mm. they come here with their kids, you know. Oh, that's so cool. It's actually like one of the things is the lighthouse. Um, my business partners originally, when they were thinking of what can we name the place? And they really wanted to uh, find a name that would make you feel like you're at home. Lighthouse. Why Lighthouse? Well, Lighthouse has a double purpose. One, to show you your way home. Two, also let you know when there's danger, you know? Mm -hmm. So it, we hope everybody who comes here just feels like it's a home away from home. We have a lot of, uh, you know, Americans, Canadians, Europeans that come in and they're all like, hey, this is awesome. We didn't, uh, you know, we didn't really expect to, uh, you know, feel like we're, in such a place that reminds us of home in Taiwan, you know? And what I find is kind of interesting is if you come especially before, what, eight or nine? I mean, this place is often packed on the weekends with mostly Taiwanese people, yeah. even though it's labeled as kind of a foreigner bar. Yeah. So I can see everybody just enjoys the atmosphere here. They enjoy the staff. Your, your whole staff is so friendly, so accommodating. It's, it's been really awesome just to come to Kaohsiung five years ago and have a place like this that I can just come with my friends and feel totally comfortable. Thank you. So cheers, man. You guys have done a fantastic job. Thank you. So I have to ask, do you guys have any special discount nights or deals or happy hours, anything like that? Well, actually, um, we have both happy hour and then we also have food discounts. So okay. uh, Sunday to Thursday, we do food discounts. Sundays, we do, uh, actually right now, it's a pretty good deal, uh, either steak or ribs. Mm. Comes with a Caesar salad as well mm. uh, for a pretty good price. On Mondays, we have hamburger and french fries. Tuesdays are taco nights, Wednesdays are pizza nights, and Thursdays are wing night. And then uh, every day of the week, we have happy hour. So our happy hour on Friday, Saturdays, and the eve of a holiday, we do for an hour from six to seven. Okay. Just an incentive for you to come here early. Mm. And then the rest of the week, uh, Sunday to Thursday, unless it's a holiday, it's uh, six to eight for two hours. Nice. Buy one, get one free on all our draft beer. So how about your future? Are you, you're a Kaohsiung man now through and through, or any plans to go home? What do you think? I, I, I don't think I can do the West. I, every time I go home, it's the inconvenience. I love Canada. Mm. Like my ideal life would be July and August in Canada, September to June in, yeah. in Taiwan. Oh, you yeah. know, I love Taiwan and I love the convenience. I love the people. I love the life I built for myself, you know. Mm. So again, I'm getting a little old, you know. <laughs> 
uh, no, getting up there. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like at some point to switch to a more regular schedule of being okay. daytime, you know? Mm. Um, even though I live the vampire life, I do try and get out during the day. I play golf, I you okay. know, go to the beach, I go hiking. Don't become too much of a vampire, you know? It's great that you found someone, something that you really love. Yeah, no, want. no, definitely. Something you know. besides teaching as well, because I know teaching is kind of the main thing that we all do. So I'm always interested to talk to people who aren't necessarily doing full-time teaching. For me, one of the big things was once I had my APRC, I was like, okay, I can kind of do what you yeah, want. Do what you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I love this. I, when I was actually young, I was in the food and beverage industry. I worked in a okay. hotel for years, and again, to me, it's just the social aspect, the you know, meeting people every day, and you know, having fun and. You know, it's uh, working in a bar. It's it's great, but it's also got its challenges. You sure. know, so yeah, this will be our 20th year in business. So uh, so come out to Lighthouse and support these guys. Honestly, you're you're gonna love it. The food is great. You meet so many interesting people here. The staff, as I said, yeah, everything's awesome here. Good Thanks, job, Wes. Sure. Cheers. Anyway, this is Eric, the Canadian, uh, part owner of the Lighthouse. Do you got, do you want to shout your Instagram or anything like that? Or our Instagram is uh, Lighthouse KHH. Mm. You can find us on Facebook as well. If you wanna, if you wanna add us on, then feel free to, you know. And if you're in Gaoshang, pop over to the Lighthouse. Cheers, man. Cheers. Thanks, Wes. No problem.